Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to MKids. I am Miss Brenda with Memorial Baptist Church, and I am so glad you decided to join us this morning. If you're watching us on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to our channel. If you're watching us on Facebook, like our page, and you'll get notifications of any new videos that we have. We are so excited for the journey we've been taking. We've been walking through the Lord's Prayer, and we've been learning how to pray, and what it means to pray. And today we're gonna to talk about directions. <gasps> and what kind of directions could the Lord's Prayer be given to us? Well, we'll find that out here shortly. But right now, let's start our day off with our theme song. And what is it? That's right, God is Listening by Life Tree Kids. Be back in a second. What y'all think? I love that song. Because you know, God is listening to us all the time. Even before we say anything, God knows what's on our heart. If there are good thoughts in our head, he knows. If it's evil thoughts, he knows. So remember, God is, always has his listening ears on for us. Whether or not we said it out loud, or if we just thought it. Keep your thoughts pure. Okay, so we usually have trivia right about now, and I've decided we're going to do something just a little different. So I am going to play the discovery game. I'm so excited. So I've got four cards for today, and next week I'll have a couple more. So we're going to play detective. So you ready? Let's see what our first card has to say. Oh, here it is. Give an adult the hardest high five you can then say, I've caught you red-handed. Ooh, that one hurt, August. Ooh, that was a hard high five. Oh, look how red my hand is. <laughs> that was fun, wasn't it? Okay, what else? What else can we have? Let's try this one. Ooh, grab a magnifying glass, bring it to an adult and say, look, I found a clue. I wonder what that clue could be. You guys can have your parents text me and tell me what your clue was. Maybe I can figure out what you found. All right, two up, let's see. 
Girl, we'll go with this this one. Uh oh. This one's kind of creepy. Follow someone around for one minute without saying anything. Shh. Just follow them around. Don't say anything. This is going to make them creep out just a little bit. But that'll be fun for you. Okay. Last one. Let's see what it says. And look up 1 John 2, 6. Read it out loud. That is Century Kids theme verse for this year. So let's see what 1 John 2, 6 says. The one who says he remains in him should walk just as he walks. Who are they talking about? That's right, Jesus. So if we are living for Jesus, we should try to be like Jesus, right? That's right. So we're going to talk about the Lord's Prayer some more today. So, but before we get started, moms and dads, for our experiment later, your kids are going to need a pair of scissors and a sheet of eight and a half by 11 <laughs> cut in half. So. If you can get that ready for them, that would be great. Okay, so, and we also have a map that they can follow. It is um, on the screen. That is mine, I colored it. You can also find it at the link below. So, let's get started. We're gonna start by checking out our prayer cross. Cause what are we talking about? Prayer, that's right. Okay, let's see what we have okay let's see who I, look guys my son's cat Athena you know what we've been praying for her and she is all better my son is so happy that she's all better and my friend Donald that we've been praying for he got a job that was a big stress reliever for him my daughter, Laura, is feeling better, so we can take that one off. My friend, Sierra, still isn't feeling too well, so we're gonna leave that one up. We're gonna still leave our friends up because some of them are still really sad because they're not seeing their grandmas or their grandpas, so they're kind of sad. I'm gonna leave Laura and Joe and Remy up there, and we're gonna leave Mr. Riggs because summer camp's gonna start hopefully soon. We're gonna leave Pastor Dan. Now, we, we got Mr. Al up there twice, and we're gonna leave him up there because Guys, Mr. Al is going to have surgery this coming Wednesday, and I just ask that you guys pray for him and the doctors this week. And, we're, of course, we're going to leave up our leaders because right now, more than ever, they need our prayers. So, we're going to leave that, and let's start off with a word of prayer. Father, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for all the lessons you've given us, all the answered prayers, Father, and even for the prayers that you answered, but they may not have been in the way we wanted. Father, um, we ask that you help us put our listening ears on and open our hearts to hear what you have to say to us today. Father, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so in Matthew 6, 9, we've been reading, um, studying for the last few weeks about the Lord's Prayer. So Jesus is teaching us how to pray, kind of like directions. He's given us directions on how to pray. So it says, therefore you should pray like this, like this, the directions. Jesus has given us those directions. Our Father in heaven, your name be honored as holy. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. And do not bring us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today, we're going to talk about Paul. Now, there's a lot we can say about Paul. Paul's Turned out to be a pretty good guy. I mean, in the beginning, he needed some help. But that's another story for another time. Today, we're going to talk about Paul's journey. 
Paul went on a lot of journeys. And before we get started, I want you to watch this little clip about his journey. Paul went on three big trips. The first was around 46 AD. Look, we're drawing a line. Starting in Antioch, Paul sailed to the island of Cyprus, then sailed up to Asia Minor and visited the city of Perga, another city called Antioch, Iconium, Lystra, and Derby. Then he did the whole thing backwards. Lystra, Iconium, the other Antioch, Perga, then Atalaya, then sailed all the way back to Antioch, 1,400 miles. He must have used a lot of gas. But no, he was either in a boat or walking the whole way. I bet those Roman roads came in, Andy. They sure did. His next trip was much further. Around 49 AD, he walked to Tarsus, then Cilicia, Derby, Lystra, Iconium, Phrygia. That sounds cold. I don't think it was. Then up to an area called Galatia, and all the way over to another called Mysia, then Troas, and then he visited Samothrace, Neapolis, Philippi, Amphipolis, Apollonia, Thessalonica, Berea, then all the way down to Athens, which is the center of Greek culture, then over to Corinth, where he stayed for a year and a half, then Sankri, then back on our boat and all the way over to Ephesus, then all the way down back across the Mediterranean, all the way to Caesarea. Whoa, what a long trip. And then to Jerusalem, 2,800 miles. He must have worn out his sneakers. I think he wore out several pair of sneakers. And finally, a few years later, around 52 AD, he went on his third big trip. From Antioch, he walked all the way up through Galatia. That would make your feet sore. Then to Phrygia, then on to Ephesus, where he stayed for three years. That's a long time. Then all the way up to an area called Macedonia. Macedonia, I like that name. And back on another boat, all the way down to Corinth, then all the way back up to Macedonia. Again? Yep, again. And then on another boat over to Troas, Assos, Mytilene, Chios, Samos, Miletus, Kos, down to Rhodes over to Patera, then once again back across the Mediterranean Sea all the way to Tyre, and down to Ptolemaeus, Caesarea, and finally back to Jerusalem again, another 2,700 miles. That's a lot of traveling. It sure is. It's like crossing America from one end to the other three and a half times and without cars or trains or planes, just as two feet and a boat here and there. What do you think about the running out of gas? I don't think Paul ran out of gas. There was no gas. There was no cars. But he probably went through a bunch of sandals. And he probably had some really good muscles in his legs, all that walking he did. Okay, so on our map, you saw our map, we've got mountains and trees because he went all over in different countries. So there was different kind of weather, different animals. He was on a boat. He was on land. He was all over the place. He wasn't in the sky. There was no airplanes. It would have been a lot easier way to travel though, wasn't it? Okay, so I'm going to read in Acts chapter... 16, starting in verse 6. They went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia and were prevented by the Holy Spirit from speaking the message in Asia. When they came to Mycenae, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So by passing Mycenae, they came down to Troas. During the night, a vision appeared to Paul, a Macedonian man was standing and pleading with him, cross over to Macedonia and help us. After he had seen the vision, we immediately made efforts to set out for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to evangelize them. Paul was on his journey. I don't, he really wasn't lost, but he was following directions. And when, see, he had all his little cities that he was going to and wanted to go to. But when he got, he was going to go to Asia and God said, Nope, stop, 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 stop. That's not where I want you to go. 
And he's like, oh, all right, God, don't know why. They, they really need to hear the message, too. So then he was going to go to Bithynia. And again, God was like, no, Paul, that's not where I want you to go. So he went to Torres, and there he was sleeping. And guess what happened this time? A vision came. Kind of like a dream. And a guy from Macedonia appeared to him and was like, Paul, please, please come see us. We really need to hear about this man named Jesus. So Paul got up and him and Timothy went that way. They went to Macedonia. They were following God's directions because that's where God wanted them to go. So, how does this how does this pertain to the Lord's Prayer? Because in the Lord's Prayer, it says, "Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven." So, we know that we want God's will to be done in our life, not our will. It's really hard to understand when God tells us no. When he tells us no, that doesn't mean that he doesn't love us. That just means that he doesn't think that's what's best for us. So, we want to talk about directions. Jesus has given us directions on how to pray. It says, therefore you should pray like this. He wants us to pray like this. Now we've talked about it. We should be thankful. We need to confess. We need to ask. There's, it's just so much. But God is listening to us. And remember, He hears us before we even say what's on our mind, what's on our heart. God knows. Okay, boys and girls, I'm going to clean up my area and we're going to come back and we're going to do a fun little thing. Boys and girls, does everybody have their paper and their scissors? And you ready? Okay. Now, when Miss Brenda saw this, she was going, How did she do that? Because it's kind of cool. Look at my paper. Look. When we're doing things, we should ask God how to do that. And He'll show us the right way. Okay. I'll show you the, how to do it. Okay. So you got your paper, you're going to cut to the center, so you're going to go da 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 and da, and then over here you're going to go da 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 going to turn it over, and then right here in the middle of these two lines, right in the middle, you're going to go one cut all the way to the center. Okay, and you're still going on, how is that gonna work? Okay, you ready? So then you're gonna flip your paper over. See? Pretty cool, huh? You wanna see it one more time? <laughs> okay, Mr. Renette, I figured I had to put it back. Okay, so after you do your cuts, you're going to flip your paper over. Look. Now, had I not followed the directions, would I have been able to make it with this fancy flap that looks like it's magically connected? No. So, if I wanted to go, say I wanted to go to cal I'd have to have directions. If I want to cook something, I have to have directions. If I want to get to heaven, there's directions. We talked about that last week. God, Jesus has given us directions on how to pray with the Lord's Prayer. That's all we need to do. We just need to follow the directions. Following the directions will make our 
thingy come out right. We'll make our cakes come out right. He'll get to get us to the places we're going without getting lost. Father, thank you. Thank you for everything. Father, right now, I just, uh, I ask you to be with each, each of the kids today. Father, schools are ending, Father, and summers are beginning, but right now, no one knows what those summers are going to look like. Father, I just ask that you just be with each of us. Father, right now, I lift Mr. Al up to you as he prepares for surgery. Father, I just ask that you uh, be with the doctors and be with Mr. Al and be with myself as we um, go through this this little transition. Father, um, we love you, and there's so, so many blessings you've given to us. In Jesus' name. So, boys and girls, I want to know if you were able to figure this out with the directions. So, moms and dads, let me know. Um, send me a text. Send me a message. Just let me know. We're going to end our day today with a new song, also by Life Tree Kids. It's called Only a Prayer Away. See you next week. Just call your name.